I want to show you guys what I think is the strangest thing in my game collection. The Isaac Singer sewing machine. Let me explain. Before Singer, Jaguar was the one that actually partnered with Nintendo to make these sewing machines to cater to a younger audience because sewing had lost pretty much its appeal and popularity. So the market was struggling and they wanted to partner with Nintendo to cater to that young audience, but they also wanted to make it to where you could use a digital interface without it costing an arm and a leg because back then a sewing machine with a built-in digital interface was insanely expensive. So using the Game Boy as its own computer was a way to cut down on cost and basically pass on the savings to the consumer. So it really was a win-win. The unit retailed for about $800. That was fairly cheap for something that was coming with a digital interface. When the unit first released in Japan, Jaguar was the one that was making it, they released it without a pack-in Game Boy Color. And it was because the Game Boy Color sold so well that they just assumed that most households had it. So when it first released, it didn't come with the Game Boy. When this released, it came in six colors. They were trying to mimic the iMac. The clear plastic was a very popular trend in the 90s, and they were try trying to mimic that popularity by making their sewing machines have different colors with that clear plastic on it. Mine is the teal one, which is, like I said, the Singer sewing machine model, which was released a little bit later. Although I would say the sales weren't like mind blowing, they did manage to capture about 10% of the market in Japan by trying to cater to a younger audience. So when did Singer come into this? So they basically got whiff of what they were doing in Japan and the, they had just filed for bankruptcy, so they weren't doing very well, but they ended up deciding to like basically buy up the the rights to this and then release it under the singer like company name and they named it the Isaac which I believe is the name of the guy who started the singer uh, company anyway. There are three models in total of these machines and some collectors have really made it their goal to collect all three of these. There wasn't a lot of information about this machine quite a few years ago when I first got it. This machine was gifted to me by a doctor I used to work with. He liked repairing sewing machines on the side for fun and he found this at a Goodwill and gave it to me. So when I got this from him, I had to do a lot of research to try to figure out what, what this was, what it was worth, what I needed. I ended up having to buy the cartridge off of eBay, which back then I paid about 50 bucks for it. Not exactly sure what it runs for now, but it was very interesting trying to get some information about this. And now there's a little bit more information, especially with Kelsey Lewin's uh, video that she released a couple years ago. But this is a very weird piece of history. And Nintendo is not shy about trying to make weird peripherals. I mean, they've made things for diabetics for the Nintendo DS. I mean, they do weird stuff. But it's very interesting to have a piece of history in my game room. I really feel like they missed an opportunity with their first release because the cartridge doesn't actually sell anything Nintendo related at all. It does exactly what it was made to do. It's a machine that has a digital interface for like buttons and patterns and it does all these different things and it can remember some of your favorite patterns that you want in there. You can change the spacing of where you're going to be sewing. But there's no... like Mario. There's no Kirby. There's no nothing on it. Like, you would think that they would want to put something on there. Now, I understand that Nintendo may not want people etching their character onto fabric so they can just, like, release that on their own. They're pretty, you know, weird about their IPs, but you'd think they would have put something. Now, at Space World, uh, in 2001, they were talking about Kirby Family, which was another rendition that actually had, like, 32 patterns from the Kirby franchise but they ended up canceling it just because overall the sales weren't good for the sewing machine. After some very loose research, mine is kind of in the ballpark worth maybe seven to $900. I don't have all the accessories. I don't have the tape that came with it. Um, I would probably have to partner up a Game Boy with it. I don't own a teal one, so I would have to be a Mitch Matz one, but uh, the price seems to be kind of weird, but somewhere in that neighborhood, my unit has yellowing on it, which is pretty characteristic of units like that with that plastic. It looks like in box, it can go anywhere from like $1,300 to $1,500. So if this is something you're wanting to add to your collection, you're going to have to pay up for it.
So you must be wondering, you know, how does this thing work? So I'm gonna demonstrate with a piece of like junk cloth and show you kind of how this works. So what about the cartridge? This bad little cartridge had so many things packed onto it. This thing was acting as the digital interface for the sewing machine, and there was actually a lot of options. You got the typical stuff like the patterns. Now I was quite amazed at how many different choices there were. Like I said, I don't really sew a lot, so I wouldn't even know where to begin, but it is really cool that you have all of these options just to have sewn onto any fabric that you want. There's the buttonhole feature where you can choose the type and then the width and the sizing and then the letters like I've displayed earlier before. There was also a custom option. Now, I don't even know if what I was doing was even possible, but it is really cool that you can just make these custom designs on here. All right, well, that does it for the strangest thing in my collection. What do you guys think of this thing? Do you think that that was a good idea, a good collaboration? I mean, ultimately, this is definitely something that I don't know what to do with. I'm not a seamstress. I don't sew so very often, but it is very cool to have it in my collection and uh, just kind of review the history of it a little bit. What do you guys think of this? Do you guys have anything like this in your collection? Or what is the weirdest thing in your collection? But thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget, there's a pixelated world waiting out there for you.